Today's episode is with the Yui Loco Society to see what's been happening since the last time we spoke to them. Welcome to In The Loop. Hello folks and welcome to the Watercrest Line. Now if you are watching this on the day this video comes out then do come down to railway tomorrow, Saturday the 1st of July, for the Yuri Locomotive Society are having their open day, which is a fantastic day where you meet some of a talented team who help put together 506 and are helping put together 499 bring it back into working order. There's lots of information about the locomotives and a few surprises along the way, so well worth a visit. Now. Without further ado, it's time for a quick far look around the railway to see what's been happening since the last episode. Over here in Ropley MPD, our little tank engine's boiler has started to get its trademark colour back once again. The crenolin's on, this is the cladding. Some bits had to be repaired, so they're being test fitted before they get taken off and put in for a proper repaint. On the back head, you can see the gauge glasses and other boiler fittings are starting to be mounted as well. Looking at 75079, last time we were here, Matt was measuring up the conrods to see if any work needed to be done. Some minor work did need to be done, which is to be expected once you account for all the miles the locomotive would have done before being overhauled. On my right here, you can see the axle boxes for the 75, where it has been white metalled. The faces here are about to be sent away for machining and they've had some new manganese put on as well. And finally, looking at the chassis, they're doing some alignment works with the horn guides. They're essentially making sure when they put the axle boxes in, they'll sit square and true to each other. This needlessly is incredibly useful because if anything is offset or isn't sitting where it should do, the engine is gonna essentially fight itself and almost shake itself to pieces. The long-term effects will be more maintenance on the engine, more maintenance that you don't necessarily need to do if you had these set, which is why it's important that they're doing the work now. Over here in the carriage works, you can see 4211's roof has become more convertible lately. They're currently stripping off the main panels and the next they'll be taking off the hoop structure where they can start work on the replacement roof. At the far end, you can see the coach up in the air. That's the one that was in last time for its underwiring works, which is still continuing. And its bogies are currently outside, ready to go back in. Now the horn guide work has been finished. Over here in the boiler shop, we saw Canadian Pacific's boilers being turned in the last episode. If you haven't watched it, very satisfying time lapse. But anyway, the crown stays have now arrived and at the top of the boiler, which is what we can see now, the holes are currently being tapped, ready for the crown stays to go in and then that tooling process will begin once again. Inside the firebox, a lot of the stays have now been tooled over and tooled in as well, uh, using tools like this with our talented boilersmith, Jamie. And if you do want to see what's involved in some of that, well, he actually taught me on one of the sessions how to do a basic job. Turns out I was all right-ish. Quite an entertaining episode, it was called Working On It. It was the start of a new series, do watch it. You can see the flexible stays have now been put in, the top ones are still being worked on, and on the outside, you can see one of the washout plugs for the Fermic siphons, which has been tapped. The second one is still working on. And finally, we've been used to seeing number one's boiler here from the Talaquin, but it will soon be time to go back. They're finishing the final works before sending it back up, which is what you can see behind me. Sam essentially is doing some welding for the dry steam pipe. Most engines, the regulator, where you have to harvest the steam to go into the cylinders, is in the dome. However, on this engine, the regulator's actually in the smoke box. So the steam still gets harvested from the top through the dry pipe and gets piped through to the regulator. One of the many quirks of these fantastic engines. It's been a pleasure having it here and we wish the Talapin all the best and we might have to pop up there sometime to see it running once again. Now for all of you social media fans, we have launched ourselves on TikTok with our fantastic new presenter, Ryan, who will be taking you through some events, how stuff works. So hopefully that should be well worth a look at. Well, a lot happening here at the Watercrest Line. Now, following on from the boiler shop, we do have an extra bit of news for our talented boiler shop foreman, Sam, is leaving us for passages new. Um, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank him for leading his fantastic team, all the work he does. And from a personal note, thank you so much for your help with the videos. They really have helped and keep everyone in the loop with everything that's going on. So thank you so much, Sam. Now, on to today's topic, which is with the Yui Locomotive Society, where we haven't had a catch of quite a while. So let's rectify that now with our chairman, Mark. 
So, Mark, thank you for talking to us. Um, the last time we spoke to you was the start of last year. So yes, what's happened year ago, since well, then? Uh, well, you joined the Euroloco Society for a start, Will. I did join the Euroloco Society. Which was a major Society. announcement to everyone. Um, <laughs> in all seriousness, an awful lot's happened. Um, but what I will say before I go any further is a lot of that is due to the increase in numbers we've had <coughs> in the group. I think when I spoke to you last year, we had an engineering team of about eight or nine guys. We now got 22. Oh, blimey. So okay. fortunately, not everyone's on site on the same day, but it means we've got a huge resource now and we can really start pushing this project forward. So last 12 months, focus has been on the ash pan. Do you remember the famous ash pan? Yes, so it was we, 506 was the challenge to try and fit it inside, so you're doing yes. it separately now. Correct, we've done it the proper way. So we had the foundation ring off the boiler, off the firebox. It was brought out and sat here on trestles, and that enabled Barry to fabricate the whole new ash pan, which is now finished. So 12 months on, we've done that part of the project. It's now down at the other end of the yard for storage. Um, the other big thing we've been working on is the tender chassis. I think when we spoke last time, we had literally just put it on site. Yes, in we were two just sections. starting to set out the braking system yeah, as yeah. well, but only just. That's right. We had a roof over the back end, nothing at the front. We now roof the whole thing in. Um, I'm actually going to introduce Barry in a while, if I may. But the back end is now virtually finished, waiting to be turned the right way up. The front end, when you saw it last, we had picked it apart. Mm. It's gone back together. Work has, has been done. It's now got to come apart again. Uh, but again, I'll leave Barry to go through the why and what that's all about. By the end of this year, as every likelihood, we'll have a completed tender chassis. Oh, fantastic. So one no. step closer. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're really pleased. And then front bogey, really good progress on that. The infamous Holly Green is oh, on yes. the wheels. London South Western. Everyone knows about the Holly Green. Really excited when that went on. It does look good. It's going to be a nice, unique livery. Oh, also, absolutely. Seeing a pre-drooping livery as well is quite yep. nice to see yep. as well. Yeah, and the, the paint has been agreed as the, as the colour. It was actually mixed by Jose, who's the railway's painter, mm -hmm. approved by Barry. Then went off to Williamson's Paints, who did a mix. Absolutely perfect. So we've now got everything on file. And hopefully, in not many years' time, there she'll be. Right, well, no time like the present. Shall we uh, chat to Barry? Great idea, Will. Let's drag him in. Excellent. Okay. So, Barry, main frames, what have you guys been doing at the moment? Well, we're trying to uh, basically recover all the holes that hold the brake hanger pins on. They've become excessively worn over the years. Um, some of the holes are grossly oversized. That one's normally inch and a quarter-ish. Um, we've recovered these holes to 15 sixteenths, all imperial measurements, ready to put new rivets in, which are seven, eight rivets. Um, this is the old uh, brake hanger pin, as you can see, totally worn out. Um, a long, hard life, by the Absolutely, 40 years of abuse. Um, Eastley have obviously even put loose weld in here to try and keep the, uh, get the play out. That's the new ones we've had made already. So the idea is we finish all the holes, we then machine this to size, they're case hardened, riveted on, job finished. Okay. So we've literally having to recover everything back to somewhere near the original sizes. This is another little job we've got. This is the footstep off the other side of the engine. Um, partially repaired, partially replaced. New hot rivets put in on new angle. Um, we've now in a position we can offer it back up to the engine, finish riveting, and then it allows the guys doing the vacuum train pipe to put the pipe work in. So it's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. You've got to put one piece in so you know where the next piece is going. Together. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Super, so we've, that's, the mainframe is coming nicely. Yep. Mark mentioned a lot about the tender chassis, so ah, well, can we yes. go and have a look at that? We certainly can. Indeed, so. so, Barry, rear tender has obviously come along a long way since we last seen, so what's the state of play with this? state of play is we have nearly finished the back end of the tender. Um, see if we keep it everybody in the loop, as the saying goes. This is the half of the tender which we've recovered. It's tender uh, 3223, came from Woodham's off of 825. S15. Um, so this is the bit we've actually managed to recover. The rest of it was so corroded. So we've got brand new pivot that the bogies pivot on, new plate work, all riveted in, uh, repairs to the stretchers. It's basically 
brought the tender back to as near as original condition as we can. Because oh, corrosion was just horrific. Um, so yeah, we've, we're well there. Fantastic. Yeah, so do you want me to show you the front of the tender? Well, yeah, it needs must. Needs must. From where we started, everything's been replaced, renewed, with one little bit of a stretcher salvaged. So we've got effectively upside down at the moment. We've set all the way shaft up, the brackets, the vacuum cylinder. So the, 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 the idea at the moment is to get everything fitted in the right place upside down, test it all manually, take it all apart, get all the swarf out behind the plates, then we can rivet everything up together, turn it over, and then we can do the same again on the, on the bottom plates. Oh, easy as, yeah. Easy yeah, as, yeah, and yeah. then of course the little thing, we've got to get some sticky glue to stick the two girders together. Right, right well this is another little job which uh, we've been doing in our little machine shop, bolts to hold the uh, wing plates for the vacuum system on, taper washers made, because obviously a girder's tapered and the bolts go vertical. Uh, again, all made to all bespoke the size. Um, just another little job of the of the tender. What's a not what's another little job between vents, eh? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, shall we pop through to the boiler shop? And see yeah, why not? There? Let's see what we've been up to in there. Fantastic. So regarding the boiler, um, we've seen a lot. They've been doing the lap plates on yeah. uh, the sides, but what else have we been working on? Yeah, well, the biggest problem of this boiler is like all the S15 or N15 types is we've got a whole load of crown stays to take out. In fact, every single one, 180. Oh, right, fair enough. And Just 180. you can't access them unless you actually get between the firebox roof and the crown sheet and cut your way through the gas torch. Looking forward to that intensely. <laughs> Did it on 506's current boiler. Can't wait. Uh, <laughs> Just for the record, this is boiler number 799, uh, which... Uh, I think was Sir Ironside. Um, oh, so one of the King Arthurs. Yeah, one of the King Arthurs, one of the easily built oh. ones. Um, 1958 firebox, uh, so it's pretty decent firebox in it. So we said we're doing the laps. Any little embellishments, little problems, we're welding them up as we go, or contractor is. Um, obviously the foundation rings back in, and uh, come this way, I'll show you what we do on the front of the room. Oh, Right, just let you know what we've been doing here. Um, steel throat plates missing, along with the three quarter eight or steel wrapper on the, on the top and obviously the bottom. Um, everything's been brought back to as near as we can to replace any corrosion. The previous throat plate dates back probably 1948, 1950. It's been extensively welded in BR days. Some of it not very nice welding. So new throat plate, new plate all round. Obviously new stays new rivets, foundation ring, and in the barrel. So the idea is bring everything back as near as we can to basically new condition. Makes sense, the more effort yeah. you put in now, then that's the easier right. it should be that's, to run. That's right, yeah. So there's quite a lot of work to do, but basically it's a sound border with a sound firebox. Oh, sterling job, Barry, thanks so much. Man. No problem, mate. Now a quick step away from 499. Uh, Sam, you're the volunteer coordinator, and we've got That's quite right. a unique position, you say, of having too many people for the jobs going. So what can you guys do? Yeah, so in the last 12 months, we've been lucky to get uh, quite a good group of younger volunteers through. Um, but there's not always enough jobs on 499 to keep everyone occupied every weekend. So when we've got more people on site, um, one of the main things we've been working on is the little tank engine here. Um, more specifically, the insides of the frame, so everything red. Um, we've been removing any rust, any uh, corrosion, um, and then repainting as we need. Um, it's sort of one of those jobs that I don't think has been done for a very long time. Um, and while the engine's disassembled, um, now's the chance to do it. So giving it a bit of love um, and hopefully it will stand it in good stead for the future. So yeah, it looks really, I mean, makes life imagine much easier without sitting in the book and a big boiler on top exactly, of the head. Exactly, yeah. Actually, one of the biggest um, areas that we've tackled is in the section where the firebox is, which obviously you're nev never going to get at mm. unless the boiler's out. Um, so there was almost no paintwork left there and, and a fair bit of rust. So um, if nothing else, it's, it's protected, even if no one sees it. Fair play to you guys, important jobs. But Sam, that was perfect. Thanks so much, mate. You're welcome. So Mark, thank you so much for showing us around and thanks to Barry as well. Certainly oh, a, a lot happening since the last time we spoke to you guys. Yes, so I suppose has. a nice standard question, how can people keep track of what's happening with 499 and 506 and support the UE Loco Society? Well, in terms of support, obviously joining the society is what we love people to do. We've got our little leaflet that you'll see dotted around the railway. We have a website which you can join online. It's fully interactive now. For that, you'll get in the main our little stovepipe magazine, if you remember from last time. This comes out 
three times a year, 44 pages I think we're up to. It will tell you through various reports what's going on in the society, what we've done in the last period, but we also like to bring in stories from members, recollections of their railway experiences from the past, maybe from the present day. We're actually introducing a new feature now, which is the youngsters that have joined us, because I said to you, the engineering team numbers have grown. Brilliant, so especially so, more youngsters coming in as well. Yeah, absolutely yeah. right, absolutely. Um, because we joked last time, didn't we, about the age thing, but it is true. You know, we, we're talking this morning, this will probably be the last major project in terms of restoration that Barry and I will be involved in. We've got to finish this, we've got our nine wagons to do, and then the legacy's ready to pass over, but we want to pass it over to the younger guys in our own engineering team. We're encouraging them to learn new skills and then write about their experiences. So, for example, one of the youngsters has been working on the pipe work. I'm pointing under here because that's where it is. Um, he's written an article about how he's taught himself to do that, which will go and stow pipe at the, at the end of May-ish. Brilliant. Um, so it's, it's, we're a family. We've, we've always worked that way. We're a family society. We have a bit of a, a laugh as we go along. We've got a serious piece of work to do as well. And we just want people to have fun and enjoy themselves and be part of something that will be here for decades to come. For all, as Again, we've said before, Will, it's the future generations, not just our engines. We're here based on the Watercrest Line. The Watercrest Line is what it's all about. We just need to all work together to grow the society, to grow it, and to run our engines and our, and our freight wagons. Certainly is an important point just for, I think, just railways in general. You summarised it perfectly. We're here because we enjoy ourselves and yeah. you get a lot out of it. But uh, I think that's a perfect note to end on, to Mark. Thanks again. Folks, thank Pleasure you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit a like and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time. Bye.